Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of the IP3 Podcast. I'm Kevin. I'm Alex. Uh, and I'm Rhea. Nailed and we're it. fighting for who does in what order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big news this week. Pro Torch happened. And it was kind of wild. Um, had some... <sighs> Strong performances, some epic finishes. Uh, Dromai nearly gone at the end of it all when it's all said and done. Um, yeah, uh, I mean she it's... is she is gone. She needs to win two pro two pro quests. Yeah, that'll yep. happen in like the first fifteen hours of the pro quest season in two weeks. It would be funny if it takes longer though. Like if, if some people are just. Moving away from it preemptively. It it is kind of staggering how many heroes get right near LL and then just never hit there. Briar was at nine nine eight for forever. Prism was at nine nine eight for forever. Starvo was at like nine ninety, and then they were like, okay, but he still has another competitive season left. And a pro tour. And a pro tour. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is a weird phenomenon. Maybe we'll hit another, I don't know, couple year stretch of the game where instead it's like, oh man, heroes tend to just, you know, they get just over 800 and then they like win a pro tour and they leave early mm -hmm. by comparison. I I will say I don't expect that to happen to Dromai, right? The stalling <clears throat> out because we're still in the same meta yeah. that she's been the most winning deck. Um, I don't see that changing with pro quest season. Talking about Dromai winning. So, I, I don't know. The last time I looked on like Min Max, Sigil Solace was like a 15 cent card. Since when is it a $30,000 card? What's up with that? <laughs> Since Sunday. <laughs> Since Sunday. Bree Breezy's Twitter post just cracked me up though, just immediately. It's like, want to sell $200,000. I know what I have. I know what I that have. Is... Yeah. Peak. Feb, Twitter pretty i mean what a breathtaking end to a pro tour let alone just any flesh and blood game that might that might be the most like entertaining finish to a tournament i've ever seen um just in card games like i there's magic has some moments but that game is also 10 times older than flesh and blood is it's just really cool to like be there and see history happening for this game and at the um, highest level too. Yeah, and at the highest level. We it, if you didn't catch Pro Tour coverage, uh chat, by the way. Chat, sorry, I'm in streamer <laughs> mode. <laughs> um the Pro Tour finish was decided by a hatchet for five dominate coming in. Draw my head. Timeout. No Pro Tour spoilers. If you haven't watched it yet and you want to be surprised, sure, you're sure. about to Go. find out what happened. <laughs> All right, you've had time to go watch it. <laughs> there was a dominated hatchet for five. Dromai was at two. There were no D-reacts. The only out was sinking the prior hatchet and drawing Sigil of Solace off the top. And I, I think someone went back and looked at the number of cards he had seen, how many copies of Sigil he had seen, where he was in his first or second cycle. I think it was first cycle still. And it was a one in six chance. And he ripped it right off the top. Ugh. Where's, it was. Where's that luck when I roll my scab skins? Huh? Why is it a one? Why is it just always a one? Uh, well, your luck is just on camera because it happened to me on stream round two. Um, you, you would have noticed that your viewers when you paused and went and watched all the Pro Tour coverage and then came back earlier. Um, oh. All of it, all like twelve hours of it. <laughs> all twelve hours of it. Yeah, we waited very patiently for you. But uh, yeah, I had a I had a pro tour feature match. It was pretty cool. I've it never was... had that before. You had worlds. I I've had worlds before, but you've... this is the first pro tour. That's true. That's true. Now you've run the gamut. And you've uh... had you've had battle harden tour. No, you haven't had calling, have you? Game. I need mats and calling still, yeah. I just okay. jumped straight to tier four events, but uh, <laughs> I was playing a list that I've 
been teasing a lot, and I know Alex was playing 79 cards similar to me. <laughs> I think because you had a better record in the Pro Tour, I officially have to concede Invoke Soraya is a good card. He couldn't convince <laughs> me to play it. It's still not in my deck box, but uh, it's a good card, it, Alex. How, is... how did your weekend go? My weekend was great. You want me to run through, like, Every round, real quick, or is that not? Maybe not I mean, literally not every round, but yeah, everything notable along the way. Any sweet finishes or tragic endings? Um, so playing Prism, sitting down round one. I get to the table first, write down my life, my life total on the pad, waiting for my opponent to get there to see what hero they're on. My opponent gets there, not actually late but legitimately everybody else in the event hall was sitting down so i was like am i gonna get around around one by and the in the pro tour that'd be pretty sweet it happens it happens yeah and then it kind of did happen because he sat down and he, and he said uh 32 oh no don't do this to me bro and i was like what he's like i'm playing kano oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a tough match for kano just a bit he played it well, but it's just not not in Kano's favor. Uh, so I got that one. Round two, I played Matt Rogers. Which That's is cool. a big name. Yeah, he was playing KO. And I sit down and I say that I'm playing Prism. And he has to reach across the table and read what the Prism hero card does. So oh, that's a good song. That's fun. And then proceeds... To, we proceed to have a four-turn game. Three of the turns have Blood Rush Bellows, and the fourth turn has a Scabs roll for five that I re-roll into a four because uh, oh. our prison list is running Gambler's Gloves for the KO problem. <laughs> so that game finishes. I dealt zero damage to him. He ends the game at 38 only because Beast Within uh, <laughs> damage to him. And then he goes, "Oh wow, I've never, I've never played against Prism ever." And I was like, "And you still haven't, Matt. You still haven't, because uh, I didn't get to do anything this game." Uh, so those are, those are as we like to say, bad beats. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, round three, get another KO, I'm able to win that one. Round four, another KO, get that one. Go into Going to draft three and one. I <laughs> all of our draft practice, I'm like, I'm probably gonna lean towards brutes and guardians, just because I feel like every time I draft warrior, it's just like a medium deck that I just go one and two with, which is I gotta I gotta try to do better than that at the pro tour if I'm trying to do well. And then I open up my pack one, pick one, and there's a hot streak in it. Well, there you go. I guess that's all out the window, and I'm gonna play Warrior. <laughs> see, see, you would say that because I had a very similar experience in my draft. Uh, I two two CC. You saw one of the losses on camera, uh, but in my draft, I opened a pack one pick one prize Delea, and I was like, "We did it." And then I got handed pick two, and I was like, "Hmm, there's a Warrior card missing." And then I got handed pick three, and I was like, "Hmm." There's two warrior cards missing. <laughs> and then I got handed pick four, and I was like, hmm, there's no warrior cards in this pack. <laughs> and uh, so, I, so I burned about five picks in pack one before I pivoted the brute and uh, had a very middling one two draft. Yeah. So I picked the hot streak, obviously. And then right. end up in a pod where I am one of two warriors. Uh, I think the other warrior was Josh Lau on also uh, Olympia. So there's zero size in our pod. It's just two Olympias. <laughs> and then so Incredible. I go into round one and play against KO, who has a knucklehead, which is unfortunate because that's a really good piece of armor. So going back and forth, just doing the fab limited grind, it gets down to be the point where I'm at one... He's at three. He's having to play around my reactions, and I'm having to block everything. So I 
Coming with a wage vigor. He has the exact three blocks that he needs. Clash of might. Clash of agility. And he wins the clash. So now he gets a might, an agility, and a vigor because he blocked it oh, all. No. Oh my and then those four resources proceed to be claw into wild ride, which is uh, 11. And that proceeds to kill me because I can block 10. Uh, so That's that was rough. unfortunate. But round six and seven, I play against two Betsy's, which Hot Streak is really good into the Guardians. So I mm-hmm. won both of those ones. One so of those being. Puts... Yeah, one of those you... being uh, the last card in both of our decks was a blue in my deck. <laughs> nice. So that puts you at five and two on day one. Yep. I personally three forward. I did not make day two of the Pro Tour. What about you, Kevin? Uh, I snuck in at four and three. Uh, my Let's day go. started a little, a little pedestrian. I had a nice round one punt to start things off. Uh, you know, the classic Asset. scabs get greedy, get punished moment, uh, where mm. instead of just taking the ten value turn that I could have had, I was like. Or if I roll this, it could be 18. And even if it's not 18, you know, I'm more likely to just end up with one action point than than zero. Uh, and I ended up with zero. And I did nothing. And I ended a game. Uh, I played KO. I think we talked about that for a few weeks. So no surprise there. I uh, ended a game into an Azalea. It was three to one. Uh, so, you know, had I attacked for 10 instead of zero, uh, Pretty pretty reasonable chance that I'm able to get there in the end of that one. So rallied back from the punt and played a Dromai in round two. That I that I was able to take that game reasonably handily. Uh, and then rounds mm-hmm. three and four were both two victors. Um, in the first one, uh, I was able to get um, you know was able to set up the big explosive turns you need, and then finally push over the finish line. And then my round four, also into Victor, was, um, you know, not like, n- nothing crazy in terms of high roll, low roll, but, you know, just a few <laughs> unfortunate uh, breaks and uh, wasn't able to close it out in the end. The The worst one was my Beast Within hitting uh, Tear Limb from Limb and a Cast Bones, like, really early. So just, just took, oh. you know, three damage that... If I have two more life at the end of the game, I can probably get there. But uh, so, you're also losing a really, really big power card there too, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so ended CC at two and two. Go into draft. Um, end up drafting. Uh, end up drafting KO. I wasn't. I wasn't going in completely determined to force. I definitely. I knew I wanted to be on an agility hero. It was basically my my addition of forcing was you know here's my two thirds that I'm looking at, um, and mm-hmm. it just happened that uh, KO was fine. That pod was a three three two sort of the expected split, and my seat for it was not the best but not the worst, and the deck ended up solid, um, and I was able to win the first two games with that deck, which I was super stoked about because. My round five was into Mara. Had um, had a had a pretty good warrior deck, but I won the die roll, and I and I think that was pretty much mm-hmm. the ball game there. Um, and was able to get the next round into a Betsy, and at that point I'm like, okay, I'm already two zero. This is this is sick. Like the fact that I have a shot to three yeah. zero this and go to day two at five and two, um, sort of e- exactly where I wanted to be. Uh, and then round seven, I just got ran over with my own CC deck in this draft format. Um, opponent, like, back to back to back Did you turns. call a judge? <laughs> it was... <laughs> For your no, opponent playing your CC deck? <laughs> nope. It was just, they had wild ride dot deck, and it worked really well. Um, they went like, oh, wild ride claw into six, and another one was wild mm-hmm. ride into a six or a seven. And the next turn was again red wild ride into claw into another you know six or seven. I'm just like I, I did what I could. I threw 17 damage out and they were just like send it to me. Come on, I'll take it. And then just ran me down. Um, Unfortunate. 
yeah so went into day two at four and three not ideal but also was feeling pretty good because mm-hmm. it was my first uh day two at a tier four event since uh leal so felt nice to sort of get that uh monkey off my back do we do we dwarf clap here or do we snap what's more appropriate for podcasting I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna golf clap. So that I, I think golf clap. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Slight golf clap. Um. Yeah, and then Sweet. day two, I ended up sort of mirroring my my performance. Uh, I was able to. Well, so I ended up three and four on the day. I was able to two one my next draft pod, and then my. Uh, actually, the the game that I'm most proud of on the weekend wasn't even a game that I won. Uh, my okay. day two. I haven't heard the story. So it was my day two draft pod. I this time, because I went in at four and three, I'm like, I really need to, I need to three o this to you know remain in any amount of contention for top eight, and decided to uh, employ the Mark Morrison tactic of uh, go brute or go home, and because because I mm-hmm. felt like if I could get a really busted KO deck, that's my easiest shot at pulling off the 3-0 and staying in contention. Yeah. So pack one. Uh, so, so Easton Douglas is to my immediate left. So that's who I was passing to for mm-hmm. most of this draft. And I open my pack and there's a foil blade flurry in it. And I'm like, that sure looks like a card that's going to put a warrior to my immediate left. And I take Damn, a, I take flurry a, too. yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've passed the, the stamped foil blade flurry to, to Easton and take a brute card or might have been a down and dirty that is what i what i took um and i get on the brute train end up one of three brutes there were three guardians in the pod so easton had a very juiced um warrior deck that that he ended up with and yeah i was about to say i i heard this pod story from easton's side because he finished drafting and he texted in our team uh destroyed like I am one of two warriors in the pod. The other warrior is directly across from me at the table. We play in the first round, and it's probably deciding who three O's our pod. Yeah, uh, that is that is definitely accurate. Uh, so so Easton was able to win that one. I was also able to win my first mm-hmm. uh, pairing into a Betsy, um, and so I got paired into Easton in the second game of that pod, uh, and basically I. I felt like my deck was was punching up. Like the the deck Easton's mm-hmm. deck quality was definitely better than mine, but um I ended up I didn't I didn't win the die roll, but Easton had me go second. Um and so I was sort of okay. able to to leverage that in a way that I had a turn that was uh, an activated red down and dirty for eight go again into red bear fangs. Go again. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So I, so it was, you know, I I was like strategically getting my butt handed to me. And then, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. that, that turn, I think put them to one or two and we, you know, we went back and forth for a bunch of turn cycles at very low life. Uh, but sort of, you know, setting that up almost, almost let me steal that game. Uh, and even though I didn't get there in the end, you know, the, obviously the, the reactions into, <laughs> into the brutes are pretty strong. So, um, mm-hmm. eventually he was able to keep enough cards to just finish me off. But, uh, yeah, I felt like I played that game like close to as well as I could. There, there was one potential opportunity where I could have like broken my, Might gloves at a better moment to less conspicuously set up the down but not out. Um, But even that, not even necessarily strictly correct, just something that could have changed things up. But yeah, I felt like I I played that game really well. I gave myself a really good chance to beat uh, a really strong opponent with a deck that was better than mine. So that was pretty pretty cool. Uh, Tragically didn't get there, but I was able to get the win uh in the third game in the pod so ended up at a four and two overall and at the pt uh which i was actually very pleased with because it wasn't yeah <laughs> better than me <sighs> fair fair um how about you alex how was your day two draft pod 
not as good as the first one, but same record. So <laughs> okay. Ended up okay. Drafting. Well, that so it, it so it was as good as the first one. <laughs> I mean, my deck was not nearly as good. Mm. Uh, meaning, I was one of four brutes playing KO. The signals in the in the pod were really weird, and I to find out later that it was because Dan Rakowski to my direct right had like was flip flopping <laughs> between Reinar and Warrior, I think. And so interesting. There's I would get not a lot of overlap there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would get past a pack and I would and I'd look at it and there'd be five brute cards. I'd be like, sweet, I'm in the right spot. Take a brute card, pass it. Pick up the next one. There are zero brute cards in this pack. How is that possible? Okay, I'll take this blue generic or pass it. Pick up there are like no brute cards. Pick up the next one. There are four brute cards. It was just super weird. Like I couldn't I couldn't figure out what was what was happening. So I it ended up with just like the most medium KO deck you've ever seen. <laughs> but one uh, of four brutes? Yeah. So not a good hoping, place to be. very nicely medium. hoping. Yeah. Well yeah. but I'm hoping that I get to play the other brutes so that like medium deck on medium deck and hopefully I can outskill people. But no avail. Ra- round one of that pod, I play Tark Patel, who is playing Kasai, one of two warriors in the pod. <laughs> and so, uh, Hearn Zero gets the red fatal engagement, gets to put it in his arsenal. So that's how that game went. Uh, um, yes, the classic starting at 15. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then round two of that pod, I play against. Daniel Rakowski playing Reinar mm-hmm. and trading damage back and forth get down to the point where we're both just like <laughs> all blue cards, all two blocks just like <laughs> we're just clawing at each other like trying to get each other out to lose the because we're both at one mm-hmm. and the game ends up coming down to me instead of blocking with a blue two block pitching it to Sheltered Cove randomly Mm -hmm. to just save a card in deck and i end up winning the game with one card left in deck again just like (laughs) all according to plan yeah um and then the last round of that pod play one of the other ko's so i got to play (laughs) two of the other broods which is good and i i don't know what was going on but he ended up being like eight minutes late so he had an IP2. So I was able to just like win that yeah. one. I I took that time because I opened or I got past pack three, like pick seven, not seven, probably like five of foil cast bones <laughs> from from Daniel, who apparently was also on Brute, which mm-hmm. I didn't think that he was, but so I ended up just stacking it so that my cast bones would hit six. So that when nice. it, it came back around, I just played the cast bones and knew that my next hand was going to be disgusting. <laughs> so we all three had the opportunity at least to take foil stamped Majestic this weekend. That's crazy. Because in my day one draft, I ended up with a foil send packing, which... I was very sad to never actually resolve it. It was a wonderful yellow block three, uh, but the three cost, and I never drew it with a blue, meant uh, it didn't do anything more than that. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yellow three blocks are quite good. Yeah. It's just the, just the nature of limited. Yeah. So then going into the last four rounds, we see paired it into Dagon White, playing Dorinthia, Decimator Axe. Somehow a spicier Dorinthia list than the Hatchet story that almost won the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate for Dagon, I know what that Dorinthia deck does because I've played it before. Um, This is probably the best game I've ever played. (laughs) At one point, the life totals were... uh, Dagon had 45, and I had 6. (laughs) <laughs> and I ended up coming back and winning that game 
incredible. Do so you just... ALS loop or did you just outvalue? No. Um I got to the point of Genesis out mm -hmm. merciful passing, and then I got he knew to target Pierce Reality after I played the mm -hmm. first one and mm -hmm. he killed it like snap immediately, even though there was other things on board. I I knew that I had to the first one I had to play an ALS and then play Pierce. And then on the very next turn, also play another Pierce. Mm -hmm. So that now my blue heralds are coming in for nine, which with all his like shunts and oasis and sinks are just like really awkward to block, especially when there it's nine go again. So if he like spends too much on the first blocking the first attack, then I'm just gonna end up hitting him with the second attack. Mm -hmm. And then I just kept like pitching and putting the Celestial Cataclysms back into my deck until I finally got to the point where Genesis had got me enough soul where I was able to just like um, Herald, Angel, Cataclysm, Herald on a turn. <sighs> and that was finally able to... That is how we long. do it. Yep. I had a... I had a similar game versus Dawnblade Dory in the calling where I ended the game with C Strike 7 go again, C Strike 7 go again, Herald for 10 after my Pierce realities. Yeah. Um, C Strike, good card. Very unassuming. Very yeah. good card. Uh, so won that one with like two minutes left in the round. <laughs> so sprinted to the bathroom. Uh, the next round, I played against. Andrew Rothmel playing KO. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a very weird game where we were just trading life. He's kind of just letting my stuff hit, which is interesting. I, Sounds he like threw, a game that Prism is winning. Yeah. It, I, like when I had my pop off turn, the life totals mm -hmm. were 15 to 15. Whoa. Which, which that's is great. really good for Prism. Yeah. He his his hands early were just that utterly terrible, and then the inevitable scab skins roll. Uh, rolls six, and I was like, "Well, we're running gamblers clubs for a reason." Yeah, Please that's, roll that. You just pick it up and you <laughs> point it at that die and you say and, it again. <laughs> and then he proceeds to roll a five, and then is able to clear. Um, Arclight Sentinel, Soraya, and Passing Mirage That's all in the same turn. The worst. Oof, and then the worst. Uh, ends up end up losing that one. And to... opponents rolling uh, two action points twice? What's that like? <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't imagine that. Good thing there's no video evidence of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you're in a bad spot when you have to play Genesis pitching a yellow no block, and then also pitching Light of Soul in hope that there's a yellow on top so that you can get a figment so you can flip it to an angel and live. That Yeah, that's not a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a bad spot when you're doing digging, that. Digging deep for that one. Yeah. Turns out blues are not yellows, so did not win that one. Uh, round 13, playing the world's runner-up in Sang. Playing Victor, which is a good match for Prism. But I did not win that game. What went wrong there? I was about to ask the same thing. Good amounts of aggression. Probably, probably the only person who's actually practiced against Prism. Because <laughs> he, he knew it was going on the whole time. And we talked after the game, and he's like, oh yeah, Prism's, Prism's super scary. And uh, I ended up looking in his graveyard probably midway through the game, and he had seen uh, all the go again cards in his deck, mm. which is unfortunate because he's able to pressure both my life total and then also clear Angel and Spectra whenever he needed to. Um, and then were the... you ever like remotely close to looping that game, or did he have skippers, or we were just playing value? No, I went to I went. To have my, um, have my turn, mm -hmm. and I drew nine or ten cards. Didn't see an aura. 
I, I got to Ooh. I haloed to go get Figment of Erudition, obviously, and then just like held it there, played a tome and didn't see an aura. Played another tome, didn't see an aura. I was like, I can't afford to flip Soraya and not <laughs> draw auras. Because then yeah. I just lose on the spot. So then it's the rest of the game is me just trying to set up a time that I can get a card in soul to like turn my stuff on so that I can like get the train going now that I've lost Halo. And I got to have a, a little one, but by then I was super low life totals, so he just ignored the the auras at that point. And it's just like Thunderquake for ten, like spinal for nine. Where it's like I, I'm forced to block. Mm-hmm. But did not get that one. But very last round, sitting at table 29, win, and I am in the money. Uh, play against Azalea. And. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Conventionally a good matchup, right? <laughs> yeah, usually. Yeah. But they can also just like have explosive turns, and I don't have that much life total. So I choose to go first. I think this is correct. Yeah. Because either. I'm with you so far. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so flip over my equipment, draw my hand, look, see what I'm going to do. Oh, I have a pierced reality in my opening hand. This is fantastic. Perfect. And then my Excellent opponent. Zero. And then my opponent says, oh. Vestige, that's interesting. And I go, uh, yeah, that is interesting. That's not the chess piece I usually run into Azalea. I really hope that this $1,000 game doesn't come down to me <sighs> choosing the wrong chess piece because I've been playing against KO and Victor all day. Oh, <laughs> no. So, uh, I, I play, yeah. I play a Herald just like blocks with the Blocks with the whole hand, and I play Pierce. Play. It's a Pierce number two. No, 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 this is turn zero. This is on turn so, zero. Like, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and he sends the arrow for a ton, like twelve or something. I just block two cards and then swing back for eight. Doesn't block, so we're just like trading like that, and then it gets to be a turn where. I had I my total hand can block three. Yeah, because it's like classic prism. Yeah, or no, it was five because it was like a blue aura, a three block, and then two no blocks, and <laughs> proceeds to have the most disgusting Azalea turn I've ever seen. Uh, Ops puts endless arrow in Arsenal dominated. Shoots Good it. Start. And yeah. I'm like, four cards in hand. This is going to be a Rain Razor Snapdragon. It's like, all right. No. Well, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't block six. So, okay, pass. <laughs> Snapdragon. Razor. And then loads a Bolt and Shot. Uh, that's now coming in for also six. Can't <laughs> block that one either. Uh, so then... That hits, reloads, uh, puts in another bolt and shot. Oh, shoots me for six more. Can't block that one either. Plus, he has uh, bracers up. So even if I do, it's still going to be... And then loads endless. It comes in for endless for six more. <laughs> so it's a nice eight, four arrows, eight value. At uh, least a 22. Lasers. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, went from like twenty eight to six that turn, something like that. Okay. Spirit okay. of Lexi Not lives dead. on. Yeah. Yeah. But the difference in but that game there. is that I yes, I Goliath Gauntlet, Ear Edition, but I still have my Pierce Reality out. So mm. nine dominate go again, draw two, get a figment. So then I'm able to flip an angel, attack with it. And then, like, um, attack with another Herald after that. So then life totals are, like, pretty close to even. And then once the Stelia has to start blocking, like, my uh, my Heralds just are better than Arrows. 
So the chess piece did not matter, and I won that game. But incredible. I would have been very upset <laughs> if it had been the difference. That'd well, been a brutal congrats on the run. Yeah. yeah, so final final record, final place. I finished 9-5 and five at 52nd place. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, after my second 2-1 draft pod, I also played four more games of CC, and I uh, pretty handily beat a Dromai. Um, nice. And then... Yeah, so that was all according to plan. I actually, the next round, I sat next to Mercy. We were both seven and four. Uh, and then we each took very different trajectories for the remainder of the event. Uh, <laughs> she would end X4, and I would end seven and seven. Um, so so round cool. 12, I played into, or I got paired into uh, a Dorinthia, and it ended mm -hmm. up just being classic Don Blade Dory. Uh, and, you know, we were aware of, you know, the existence of the Hatchets decks and the um, Decimator Great Axe decks, and obviously, you know, you know that some people are going to be playing, uh, you know, classic Domblade version. But as much as we talked about, you know, Dory and matchups and and that sort of thing, the version that I didn't really get much in the way of reps into was the classic Domblade version. And so mm -hmm. that's definitely the one place where I feel like uh, my prep really cost me. Um, you know, I, obviously, I, I in general I know how to block into Dorinthia, but I think my my failing in that game was having a, I, I didn't feel like confident in my sense of you know where are we in the game? Is this a turn I should consider you know putting my whole hand in front to reset and you know sort of knowing knowing where and when to pick spots to be aggressive versus try and be defensive. And, you know, once the counters start rolling, they're really hard to stop. Uh, I got twinning bladed on the turn that I was like, cool, here's where I set my whole hand down uh, and died on the spot because they had uh, the boots still up and already had given go again. So it was like, sure, I'll block 11 on your six. And they're like, all right, well, how about six more and six more on different attacks when I had already used my entire hand. So got got in the classic sense, but uh that one that one's kinda on me. Um and then the last couple rounds were uh, I, I caught a Rhinar and okay. basically just didn't I got out exploded. They saw their second Blood Rush Bellow before I saw my second Blood Rush Bellow. Um and you know the first one for each of us or my blood rush turn wasn't even good enough to warrant usage of the uh, flesh bag. Uh, of yeah of scaling flesh bag, which was a problem because it was still there when I got my second one in my attempt to sort of claw back into the game, unintended. Um, <laughs> but just one claw though. Yeah, just one claw. Um, but yeah, they're they're. Second Blood Rush turn was, uh, you know, end, ended with a Massacre, um, so it was a solid 20-pointer, um, and that deck just, it blocks better, right? Like, obviously, there's some no blocks in the KO deck, and um, once you're behind to the Reinar and trying to defend, that's exactly where Reinar wants things to be, so um, they were able to close it out on me. And then the final round, I finally got paired into the now infamous hatchet story deck that uh was seemingly the most popular version of dory at the pt uh it was dan Rutkowski. um and that one i you know was aware of what i needed to do to win that match and then i proceeded to uh see no copies of blood rush bellow in the first 10 turns of the game uh cool. which for 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 those of you not familiar with it, that hatchet deck is gonna you know spit out in the vicinity of four to four and a half points of value per card, uh, like per turn cycle. So the way you need to beat that up is having some really big surge turns, right? Setting up cast bones into blood rush bellow type turns, going way above the scope of what they can block on a normal turn cycle, 
Uh, and turns out Blood Rush Bellow is generally a very big part of doing that, and I just didn't see it. So, um, yeah, like we, we, we were chatting it up during and after, and, you know, bo both agreed I fell in the, you know, the lower 50% of potential KO draws, um, and, you know, just didn't have the tools to overcome the steady stream of value that that Hatchets deck can put forth. Um, Rand, did you play Dan this weekend? Did he run the full IP3 gauntlet? Dan Rutkowski? No, yep. unfortunately, I didn't. Ah. Play that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so ended it with dropping the last three CC games, which is obviously not where I want to be. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I yeah, I don't know. It, it just, despite ending on the skid, when it was all done, I was still. I was still feeling good, which was very refreshing because it'd be really easy to be like, oh man, I was seven and four. I was like, if I went out, I'm in contention for, you know, potentially a top 32 spot or at least a top 64 spot. Um, and then mm -hmm. to go from that to nothing is, is pretty painful, but I was amped. I wasn't, uh, sometimes I end up being like, oh, I'm tired. Maybe I'll just take Sunday off, but it was still time to compete. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to the battle we'll hard after. Go through you. you you may have Holland. noticed that i uh i've been kind of quiet for a while because i was bad <laughs> and did not do to the pro tour so while these guys were getting money and having fun in the pt and playing for free i spent 70 dollars on the calling like <laughs> um not a good player there are plenty of excellent players that did not day to this pt this is like true plenty plenty um so i did so I switched to day one of the calling. I made it to day two. Um, in terms of like highlights there, I also got to play around one Kano, much like Alex did in, in the Pro Tour. <laughs> this is the way. Um, I had some other relatively easy matchups. I had an Arachne. I had a KO in round four at the 3-0 table. That was like, oh yeah, Prism, that's perfect. This matchup's easy. And at one point, I went to one and was like, I guess I'm about to die. I should probably combo off now. And uh, I didn't ALS loop him, but uh, I didn't take another point of damage that game, and I did, in fact, win. I, I think he got to around nine life before he just kind of conceded because he was like, how I never get out from underneath this. Um, I, my two losses, day one, were to um, Dash IO. Um, fun fact, Dash IO... They prevent balance of justice, or they present balance of justice. Uh, just don't play Herald of Erudition, because they say, yeah, sure, take five. Now I crack balance, I have a six-card hand, and this max feat is very easy to play. Um, <laughs> so just don't do that. You don't, it turns out you can just block with Herald of Erudition. Hard lesson learned. It was admittedly my first game ever versus Dio. Um, and then I also played against a Max. There were only three in the whole calling, and I somehow managed to play two of them. <laughs> Bit unfortunate. Matchup's pretty hard. And uh, we didn't quite get there. Um, I switched in two. Uh, my last round is a win and in versus Victor. Really nail-biter of a, of a game. I mess up the loop, and I know um, Pankaj is there because he's done with casting for the day, and he's kind of watching over my shoulder. And after the game, he was like, I thought it was over when you missed the loop. And I was like, no, 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 no. I knew I still had like nine Spectre left in my deck. Left in my deck. We're, we're all good here. Um, and so the game looks close for a while, but I do win pretty convincingly. Going to day two, I'm still in the running for top eight, but I need to win out if I want to. Um, I sit down versus Akatsu round one, and I had a... What I thought was a very um, unimportant decision in the middle of the game to arsenal a soul shield or push more damage with a Angelic Wrath. And I chose to push damage with a Wrath. Uh, and that decision came back to haunt me when I did not have a soul shield in arsenal, when the Katsu went Heart and Cross Strap, Surging Strike, Ancestral Empowerment, Ancestral Empowerment, Art of War, oh Triple goodness. Bonds of Ancestry, through my figment of judgment, I turned. I took away his uh, Katsu bonds, 
and he still played three bonds of ancestry in this single turn. Um, so that I, I lost that game. Really? It was uh, only. Uh, wow. Crazy. I'm surprised. It was only like a fifty damage turn. <laughs> Turns out, Prism only has um, thirty two health. Yeah. I had multiple opponents. I, I I would like take two damage, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I go to thirty, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. push me thirty eight. I'm like, mm, nope. nope. If you want to give me those life points, I'll take <laughs> yeah. them. But that's not the. If life you want I me to start at forty, absolutely. Um. So I I tried to rally a bit from there. Um. I beat a dash inventor extraordinaire, a Dorinthia in an incredible game where um. The Dory very early in the game, like turn three or four, had a uh, steel blade supremacy plus glistening steel blade turn, and I looked down at my hand. And it was Tome, Merciful, Genesis, and a Celestial Cataclysm. And I was like, ah, this hand blocks three. And it doesn't even search for a figment. Um, So Dawnblade had four counters for four turns. And we blocked it out the hard way. I didn't even ALS it to clear the counters. We got there. Another nail-biter of a game. Um, Spectra good. What can I say? Uh, I picked up a, another loss to the second max, of course. Sure. <laughs> all right, Jem. Um, sometimes you can't dodge that, them all. That's a pretty wild and, uh, roll. Three in the entire event, and you catch two of them. Yeah. And then uh, Chandler Toes Reinar handed me my fifth loss. Um, he had an extremely well-timed CNC uh, when I had an ALS in Arsenal, and I was ready to go off. Uh, and it delayed me significantly in terms of like assembling enough must kill threats to combo off. And then uh, when I finally did, with a much, uh, with a very underwhelming uh, word assembly later in the game, uh, he rolled six. I told him to re roll. He rolled five. And that was just kind of the game, much like we saw happen on camera uh, <laughs> with Levia. Um, but it happens. So I went X and 5 in the calling overall. Uh, I placed 53rd, missing cash on breakers by 5 places. Unfortunate. But hey, 550 person calling, top 10 percentile. With we got a long way hero, to go with Prism. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a C tier hero. Jokes aside, I mean, I, I took... I took 7 losses over the course of the weekend. There were two games that I feel like I can't point at a mistake that cost me the game. On camera versus Leviya, they rolled well. Chandler, they rolled well. Can't really do anything about those games. The, the, we intentionally play towards them getting unlucky with Scabs and others. Every other game, I can point at where I could have played better, and I think it would have changed it to a win. And that's a really exciting place to be. Catch me... In Osaka for Worlds, because that also got announced, and uh, I'll just top eight that one. I won't make any mistakes that time. You mean you won't have gotten her LL already by that point? Just winning everything between now and then? Okay, well, sure. <laughs> if that happens, then I'll play Enigma at Worlds. There you go. I'll hold you to that. Please do. Right. We're now we're to Sunday. I chose yeah. to just do side events. I uh, I could play Lexi in Living Legend because uh, that's the um, format that the Battle Harden was. But I went to go build a Lexi deck, and I was like, this just doesn't interest me. So I played Riptide in side events, and I got to play a Buzzsaw Trap against a KO that... Blocked 17 damage. <laughs> because it was incredible. Five might tokens, a blood rush bellow, and then a um, savage beatdown. So it went from oh. coming in for 19 with go again, play a buzzsaw trap, and now it's coming in. I take three damage after blocking three with buzzsaw. You take a damage. I reload a card. It's very. That's. The value. The highlight of the value. Event. Yeah. <laughs> three, highlight three, of the one weekend. Dead. Yeah. Oh. One card, 17. But anyways, while I was doing silly things with Riptide, 
Kevin was doing <laughs> silly things with Jane. True. Very true. Even sillier. <laughs> Arguably sillier. Uh, yeah, so the Battle Hardened was Living Legend again. Uh, well, say again. The first Living Legend Battle Hardened was in Barcelona, and I also played in that. And I went four and three on chain before I dropped to do some some side events. Uh, and that was with full power, full power, Starvo around. Uh, this event was a bit of a different story, though, because obviously what, there's there were seven cards that got restricted, most of the bands pretty seemingly clearly aimed at Starvo. Um, and so this was sort of the first, you know, this was the first rated event since then where we sort of see what, uh, what the format might look like. Um, and uh, as a surprise to no one, I ran Chain, because that's just, that's my guy. Uh, Shadow Room Blades, my jam. Uh, and, you know, I, I hadn't actually picked up the deck in paper since Barcelona. So I was like a little worried. I was like, oh, there's going to be some real rust here. Uh, but we, we got through it. So I, I was fortunate enough to be able to go 7-0 and in the Swiss of the Battle Hardened, um, beating some very solid players along the way. Um, interestingly, I played against zero Starvos in that seven rounds. Um, and then That's crazy. After after getting the pole position going into top eight, uh, I was defeated by Michael Fung uh, in our in our chain mirror rematch. Um, I ended up so I played against Chain three times, Lexi twice, uh, and then Phi, Kano, and Prism. One more. Oh, Prism. Yes, Prism. Um, that was a wild game to watch. That <laughs> that was a awesome game to watch versus that... Fino Black, no less. Yeah, yeah. I uh, so I had a I had a punt in that one that I was going to be very very mad if it ended up costing me. Um, I just had a sort of brain fart miscalculation on my uh, Eclipse turn. Uh, where I burnt, I burnt an action point that I I could have had, uh, could have swung the Ursa on the turn I played it, so it cost me six damage there. Fortunately for me, it didn't end up mattering, and I was able to get the game. Um, but yeah, so round one, it was Phi. Uh, my opponent uh, assembled their deck rather hastily and forgot to have the Art of Wars in it, so. Uh, I oh, that's want... a. Would you say Art of War is an important card, Kevin? Uh, yes. Um, yes, I would. And, uh, yeah, so, so got round one, they were, you know, they're like, ah, dang, if only I had seen Art of War. And then they went through after the game and they're like, oh, this might be why I didn't see Art of War. It's not in here. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a game that I, I should have and did win. Um, in round two, I got paired into Mercy. Mercy was playing Lexi, um, Mercy being one of uh, Rhea's Ascent teammates. Um, and that one was, that was an interesting game because I, I knew that Lexi was going to be part of the LL format, you know, once mm-hmm. all the restrictions had happened. Um, but I hadn't actually played into it before. So fortunately, uh, Chain's Armor Suite uh, kind of s- saves the day a bit. Um, I think I, like, I used Husk to block out a fused Frost Lock that you know, made sure that my hand, my, my next hand was going to be looking really good. And, um, MVP of the day, balance of justice. Uh, I think I might just like cut crown of Providence from the deck altogether. Cause it turns out there are plenty of decks in this format that are drawing two cards in a game and, uh, offsetting one of those is it, very, very strong. It, it's like Art just War, three three of a kind. Kind, right. <laughs> Everyone else does. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Lexi does three of a kind chain and five, both do art of war. Um, I guess Viscerai technically doesn't, um, and, but if you play into um, Prism and they've got Iridition, so if mm-hmm. if so first you get the same amount of armor to block out the first Iridition, and then if they manage to sneak one through later, you can just draw a card off of it and make up some of the value you've lost by letting it hit. Um, but was able to. Uh, Win the game into Lexi to go two and zero, 
round three was into Kano, and I, uh, that morning, had switched the blood sheath skeleton that was in my sideboard for wizards to dyadic carapace. I don't know why it wasn't that already, uh, and it will certainly stay that way, because I, I felt like I was able to win that one rather handily as well. Um, you mean AB2 is useful versus Kano? Uh, yeah, AB3 is yeah. too with you know, on board go again and cheap cards to attack with. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good mixture to pressure Kano. Okay. Um round four I caught my first chain mirror of the event uh against Lionel, who is another one of the top eighters. Um I lost the die roll on that one. Uh and he had me go second. Uh and it just it worked out. Um I, I, I drew I basically you know, not not by a massive margin, but I definitely had the the better draw of the two of us on that one, um, and was able to close it out. Um, round five was the game into Prism, which was Fano, uh, and <laughs> I think he he swung a Miraging Metamorph early, and I blocked, I, I blocked with a three block, took four damage, and he's like, and that will be the last time I attack this game, uh, because he was <laughs> fully fully on the now I need to try and you know disrupt and. Uh, interrupt this and get the chain mm -hmm. to fatigue itself. Um, my my miscue on uh, the Urser turn was punishing, but fortunately didn't fortunately for me didn't uh, prevent me from being able to able to close it out. Um, I he didn't actually end up seeing he didn't see ALS's on like good value turns for it, and then on the very last turn that he could have snuck it in and you know, made me face tank some damage. Uh, he drew it with, like, two reds and a yellow and couldn't even play it. Um, so, uh, kind of nail in the coffin on that one. Um, at that point, I had locked top eight, which was sweet. And then I got paired into Michael Fun, also on chain. And uh, that one was not super close. Uh, so I won the die roll that time, and it worked the first time, so I chose to go second, um, which I'm, I'm not 100% sure is correct, but it, it mostly felt fine, at least until the top eight. Um, and that time, I like fully just outdrew. My, my, I think my shackles were better. I think I saw an Art of War before he did. Just everything kind of went my way. A couple early oh, Runic Reclamations. Oh, he saw an Art of War. It was just... It was, <laughs> he saw an Art of War. It was just the first Vanish that he had in the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. So it, you know... Art of War is a strong indicator for who's who's going to win those. And uh, Yeah, I think... So He his first Banish was an Art of War. And at some point, I think he defensively Art of war in the game. I might be conflating those with... Uh, my match against Lionel, though, but I I took down that game and I was still at 19 life. So uh, that that is how much better my draw was into him in that one. Um, around seven, I played against Brody on Lexi, top seed. Uh, at that point, we were both locked for you know first or second seed, and um, after a brief deck check that fortunately yielded nothing. Um, we we played our game and it basically uh you know the chain armor suite was huge for the the handful of problematic on hits um remorseless put in a ton of work um but i basically the two there were three turns in the game where where brody mostly did ice things whether it was arctic incarceration or like multiple um uh, what's the discard or pay? Winter's bite. Winter's bite. Yeah, like multiple winter's bites or you know flipping. Give me a frostbite. Uh, and one turn he hypoth uh, hypothermia me. So there's three different like turn cycles in the game where his turn was just a bunch of disruption instead of offensive pressure. And not didn't really have a way to play around the hypothermia, so all I did was attack for three. Um, but the other two times that he invested heavily in you know the ice disruption, I had either two blues or the very last time when he, you know, he gave me four frostbites and made me discard a card, but I held three blues and was just able to, to pay through everything and, and close out the game. Um, that, that was another one where, you know, my, my draw just lined up very favorably and I was able to win that game 
I think I was at 22 when that game ended. So it was, um, you know, completely just how how the Blues came in response to when he was uh, presenting all the ice disruption. So was able to get to the 7-0, which is awesome. I've never uh, I've never XO'd a Swiss at anything like bigger than a a, a ProQuest or an RTN before. So that was a achievement unlocked for me. Um, and then in the now, top eight, oh well. Then Kevin. the ultimate backfire is uh, apparently I should have just like scooped to Brody because then it's yeah I was about to say have are you not familiar with the undefeated Swiss curse? Uh, I am now. It's very real. <laughs> it, it does seem to be very real. Uh, so after locking up first seed, I get paired into Michael Fung again in the top eight. He got in at, at eighth seed at five and two, I believe, uh, and so. 2-0 and when going second on the day. I use my seed advantage and choose to go second uh, to open with the a hand that I would have been thrilled about if I was going first, but going second, it was a disaster. Uh, my opening hand is was... It, is what? Is it the worst hand you've ever drawn in chain? Because it feels like it's got to be up there, right? No, like if I got a hand that was like all blue and yellow bounding demigons and nothing else going on that's pretty that's pretty bad although at least those are three blocks. blocks 12 though yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair. so so this hand yeah. that i drew up to start the game was blue minnowism red minnowism red plunder run and an art of four uh for the folks at oh, home yeah. that hand blocks all, for all a total of six it has no attacks to actually do anything with the art of war uh and would just means that even though i'm uh, you know, so so the trade-off that I'm looking for when I choose to go second in this aggro mirror is I want to be the first one, you know, taking cards from hand when I start asking questions and presenting damage. Uh, if I keep that hand and just like send, it would have been Rune Chant and Rosetta. I would have sent three damage, Arsenal to Plunder Run, and I peed myself and held the Art of War. Uh, so I could have done that, and thinking on it more, uh, you know it's very reasonable that I probably just should have. But at the same time, uh, I, I, I don't think the line I took was strictly wrong, but uh, after Michael just sort of did the turn zero setup, you know, rune chant, shackle, you know, try and go to arsenal kind of thing, um, I played out the Art of War, pitching the red minnowism just to clear cards from my hand to try and draw attacks so that I can actually pressure on my first turn uh, and then hopefully still, you know, Arsenal the Red Plunder Run is what I'm hoping to get out of this. Um, didn't work out that way, and lo and behold, that really rough opening hand uh, just led to, you know, I I think I, I hit one blue Bounding Demigon on five total shackles before I was dead. Um, and it was just the complete opposite of my first uh, my first game into, into Michael. I was able to beat me up pretty good and like so he, he was still at 14 when he killed me so not a particularly close game to end it uh, and a tragic ending to the 7-0 and start oh, someday I'll get another PTI someday uh, I believe it not that day it turns out that the IP3 podcast was five breaker points away from all cashing different events this weekend <laughs> close. that that's a, that's a pretty cool uh, and that's why you listen cool to this podcast miss. obviously yep absolutely if anybody really wants an anathos man i've got an anathos man that was the battle hard and top eight one good one it's a really good one all in all though the battle hard was a blast i i've seen people lamenting ll format as not being necessarily super fun and i know part of this is my chain bias but also, I would play Chain even if it was bad. Uh, see my world's blitz deck in, when we were in Icelander meta. Um, but I think the format's in a cool place. Um, mm -hmm. Starvo has been thoroughly chopped down to size. Uh, it, it it seems like Lexi should generally have a, a, a solid matchup into Chain. Maybe struggles a little more into Prism. You know, Viscerai and Phi still live on the outskirts. Um, Starvo's 
are the top, the top eight wasn't one hero at this event so yes yeah uh and actually i heard um i, th- I thought i heard roger say that there was a an icelander that like ended up in ninth uh uh yeah i don't know what close. place but i know in the last round there was an icelander at the top tables yeah so i assume so they, certainly they were the bubble me very happy yeah um and it just seems you know not maybe not quite open to the degree of cc but for a super high powered format like it is uh i think i think it's fairly open There's multiple heroes to choose from yeah um Definitely, I do think Chain's probably the new the new best. I don't know that he's best by, you know, he's certainly not best by the same margin that Starvo was the best prior to his seven restrictions. Um, Chain was fifty percent of the top eight. Yeah, so yeah, Yeah. the top eight was four Chain, two Lexi, one Viserai, one Kano. So very very arcane heavy. Arcane good. Arcane, very good. One day, Icelander will crack into that top eight. Yep, and one why day I'll LSS play Runeblade and CC again. LSS, why'd you massacre my girl for Starvo's sins? <laughs> why? <sighs> I, I'm still convinced CLF was was more for more for Lexi than anyone else. I don't entirely know that i believe that but lexi does play a lot more ice now than uh she used to in the past yeah um so yeah for anybody missing you know heroes that have gone by the wayside i would say so obviously dromai hasn't quite joined officially yet but well i think she'll be the eighth hero to living legend Oh, there was also a Briar like at the top tables different. at the very end, so I think they like were certainly in the top sixteen. Um, but you know, with Chain, Starvo, Prism, Lexi, Viserai, Phi, Briar, um, all of those seem like pretty cool things to bring. Um, and and uh, yeah, Michael and Roger seem to think that there is is a version of Icelander that that can hang in this format that has a you know a good matchup into chain to sort of carry it as its marquee thing it's just being able to disrupt him while he <laughs> while he kills himself um yeah if yeah. you can dodge prism and starvo and fi and just play chains i could believe you that you could make a version of Icelander that wins is that all okay. that's all well, and, well i mean if chain is and it's half Lexi, the format then Lexi Sands uh, are very likely not Trench. playing Trench. Yeah, and we all know how that goes, don't <laughs> we? <laughs> uh, so, all right, so that is a wrap up of our Pro Tour weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. So quickly, now that Dramai is at, like, basically, Living Legends needs to win to ProQuest. What what is Dramai keeping keeping down? What will be unleashed week two of ProQuest season that people should keep an eye out for? I think okay. there's a few a few different classes and heroes that benefit the most. I don't know if it'll singularly be enough to like, you know, flip things on their head for week two. Um but generally speaking, uh, I think Dromai historically was tough for warriors. It's exceedingly difficult for assassins. Uh, I think I think they're arguably the biggest winners. Uh, and then Riptide and Teclo both had a you know near impossible matchup into Dromai. Um, so them losing a matchup that's like a you know one of those. Uh, infamous 90-10s uh, is pretty huge. Especially you know, if if Warriors are on the uptick, uh, Teclo is a deck that wants to block a lot and blocks with armor and blocks very well. Um, there, there's definitely some uh, room for him to be a more reasonable pick. It's Dromai's gone. So, I'm absolutely Kevin. down to Buzzsaw Trap some... Chaos. 
I I hear y'all saying a lot of depths. Warrior, Assassin, Riptide, Teclo. These are lots of depths that Prism is very good against. It Prism's could very good. well. Yeah, it's oh, a... you're right. Prism's... I'm sorry, yeah. Alex. You're right. Didn't you Prism forget? definitely didn't. Prism definitely did not get 52nd in the Pro Tour this weekend or whatever. Definitely. Yeah. Not. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't. That's... Don't worry about it. Do anything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's probably for Prism. It's just addition by subtraction. It's. Uh, mm -hmm. when you have, you know, Jorvai was a prevalent enough meta force that, like, popper quantities were borderline non-negotiable for most decks, right? Like, yeah. is there a deck in the game that was running fewer than six? I'm I, very doubtful. I don't know exactly yeah. off the top of Rip my head. Riptide was, because uh, you just can't oh. win that match. <laughs> Prism was. We were only playing three. <laughs> Fair, but so you can but you can send are. heralds you can send heralds into dragons though. So like you can punching bag them like runeblades could punching bag dragons. Um, we also secretly had four because of Fame of Rebirth, but don't say that part too loudly. <laughs> uh but yeah, no, so I think I think the fact that so the initial reaction is going to be, okay, cool. We can trim some poppers, we don't need to, you know, keep that same popper density means that you know that that's a big positive for prism by default um and you know of those things that i said have a lot of positive gains yeah you i believe the two of you both both agree that most of those are desirable matchups as a prism um yeah. and then the other <laughs> the other plus for prism is ninjas and rhinar all lose a conventionally favorable matchup. Everything's coming up Millhouse. <laughs> and then Vincent loses her most free matchup. Uh, never oh, mind no. that making it a free win for Vincent like isn't you know the same sixty that you want for all your other game plans into most other decks. But man, could we curb stop Vincent or could Vincent <laughs> curb stop Dromai pretty nicely? Uh, I feel like I feel like you just had a Freudian slip there. Yeah, about playing Dromai. <laughs> uh, I look. I know that I wouldn't want to play Dromai into Vincent. That's for sure. Um, but Vincent gains some side. Basically, the the win for Vincent is she gains sideboard slot back. Mm. But yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what else shakes out. Um, you know, I think yeah, I, I, the I... Hatchet's deck is certainly here to stay as a yeah a, a, a figure post of this new meta 100% um, I was just too soon that's really good I was too You've soon been, uh... Alex ran Hatchet Story at Worlds in San Jose in 2022 uh, so yeah. he's just it's just ahead of ahead of his time uh, running that deck I think we lost her. Am I back? Oh, there we go. She's back. Okay. I was huh. IP1 there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just trying to comment that uh, both of y'all have been sniffing about thinking on, you know, right around the edges of Hatchet Dory for a long time. Um, we're this close to greatness. Yep. Alex got me addicted to its consistency. And I'm yeah. like, this is so cool. And I... It, it was my leading candidate alongside Ko at the start of our TN season, um, but I basically the reason I got off of it is I didn't feel like uh, the eight I had the agency into the brutes to Faya and Ko specifically. Like if they were just gonna you know tee up the the cast bones Bloodrush Bellow Uber turns, you're just gonna die. And there's not a whole lot to be done for it. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of you that deck scores points by oh, okay, you're playing Dory, awesome. What version of the three possible versions are you playing? Um, there's value there, and people not expecting it or not having you know, that sort of game plan in mind uh, when they present their 60. But when it's a known quantity, you can try and play the games a little differently. The Axe's deck isn't. Uh, you know, it can put out some damage, right? Hit and run with a third axe swing is incredible value. Uh, 
but it's also, you know, you're not just running people down like KO can run people down. Yeah. So you, you leave your opponent some space to set up some explosive turns and sort of, you know, if they get enough spike turns over your conventional 15 to 16 value and dynamo defenses, uh, they're just going to kill you and there's not a ton you can do about it. I also hadn't uh, found the uh, Dom Blade tech to, that uh, the Runaways feels makes Dromai a uh, mostly free matchup. doesn't matter anymore. It's true. Irrelevant. Don't need it. But yeah, the deck the deck's really cool. I could definitely imagine playing it for some number of upcoming pro quests. Or actually, that was true until like an hour and a half ago when they spoiled two cards out of actually no. Crap, it's not gonna be released in time. It doesn't get released until early May. Not uh, not legal until Mysteria, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh so they, they spoiled two cards for the KO CC armory deck that they're going to be releasing. Uh, one of them is a brute chest equipment called Savage Sash. It is a temper two, so baseline. Uh, uh, sure, why not? Stats. Yeah, it could just be blank and say temper two, and it would potentially have space in like sideboards and whatnot. Uh, strictly but it gets better, better raw meat. Yeah, yeah. strictly better raw, raw meat for sure. Uh, but Savage Sash has an action to destroy this. Attack action cards with six or more power cost you one resource less to play this turn. Go again. Can I interest you huh. in a wild ride into a wild ride into a bear fangs for three resources? I thought uh, I thought Skeleta was a bannable card. What happened? Why is Kevin, this in a precon? Kevin, can I interest you in, since you have might and agility because you're KO always, can I interest you in a CNC for one resource go again? into a uh, wild ride for one resource go again into a bear fangs for one resource card <laughs> can I one blue pitch. card one is blue pitch. phenomenal and it, it's funny when they were first you know when i was first brewing with ko the thing uh i was on sensor for a bit right as a one for five felt nice with a curve because you have lots of two costs uh, the thing that I felt like I really wanted in the deck was like a, a beat chest version of Madcap Charger, just like a one for five card that is a brute card. Like, give me brute critical strike in the deck, and it would it would make the cut, no questions asked. Uh, so we have that now, and it's blue Ask and block three. It's blue. <laughs> it's blue. And it's blue. So run what roughshod. Cooking with this pre is a blue block three, one cost, five power attack action. Uh, that you can only play it if you've discarded a card with six or more power this turn. Let me tell you what KO does left, right, and center. Discard six power cards. Like it this is this is so much better than what I was hoping for for like KO's specialization. And it's just it's just a card that gets to be in the deck. It's the ideal to hit off of a Blurrush Bellow. Because either it's exceedingly efficient at a one cost. Or it's a blue to pay for all the other stuff that you want to do. And with that new chest chest equipment, it's a zero for five. Just this attack costs nothing if you broke that chest this turn. So uh, I'm not sure yeah. if LSS thought that KO was going to struggle or or what. But uh, that, but, you know, that boy not, is about I to I might as well juiced. just be a KO gamer now. I it's might not, as well just be not a KO a gamer now. It's not a popper. Red, it's not a popper. It's That's not true. a real That's card. True. Yeah, there's does only feel like a, 33 of those. Does feel a bit like a reckless move from LSS, but we'll see. That's a reckless <laughs> charge joke. Uh, <laughs> we, got, we got jokes here in that K3. I Pickles mean, we're now we're 20 minutes in. It's gonna. It's just going off the rails further from here. Uh, but basically, Brute's good. Brute's great. On May third, when this Brute's product scary. releases, Brute's gonna get even better. Just kind of remember, terrifying. remember how there were uh, heart and cross straps in the Pro Tour top eight? Yeah, those just got stripped upgrades yep. today. Yep, that's scary. I didn't run it because I didn't like it, and I'm like, okay, I, I will amend. It is go time. Savage Sash. Uh, well, that's in other news. I'm pre-ordering one of those right? precons. <laughs> <laughs> 
because uh, I need it. Yeah, so that was... I. So, so here's my theory. So there, are, I do have two things to say about this. One, I now understand why Berserk was banned. It was really funny how they were like, yeah, future design choices mean that we don't want to have to design around Berserk. And there was all this later. speculation about like, oh my gosh, are we like getting an Earth Brute in a return to Arya soon? Is this it has to do with set three in like eight months this year? No. Two days later, they're just going to print, you know, <laughs> skeleton version two, but for brutes. And that's why because this would be on drugs. <laughs> ridiculous with Berserk. So, so that struck out is really funny to me. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, no. We rambled too long. It's gone. It's gone forever. I don't know. Forever. Goodbye. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any closing thoughts, Alex? They updated ELO, and I gained a bunch of oh, it, yeah. and I'm now... <laughs> I, I'm still going to play probably Riptide at ProQuest season. It'll just feel a lot worse when I lose a bunch of ELO <laughs> for playing Riptide. Uh, but look, you had to have That's good fine. ELO in order to lose a bunch of it, so... You're right. <laughs> just a reminder of how great you really are. Uh, my ELO is back into the realm of... You shot the leaderboard now. I'll never be back. Yeah. Do it. I definitely have a screenshot for when I was 13th because I don't think that's ever happening again. <laughs> but I'm back. I think I do too. I'm somewhere. back in the top 100 in the U.S. at least. Look at me go. Mm. Uh, my ELO is uh, garbage again. I would like to take this moment to remind you ELO is a made up number. It doesn't matter and is definitely not me just coping because <laughs> mine is bad. <laughs> ELO is fake and can't hurt you. It's true. It matters for approximately 76 people in the world. And then yep. <laughs> beyond that, it's just a number. So don't sweat it. I'm lose one of those 76 people now. <laughs> yeah. You just you need to take the season off and be like, hey, look, I got an invite to Amsterdam. Yeah. We'll just have to figure out how to go now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do be an issue. <laughs> a little, yeah, a little pricey. It'll be a good time. All right, so we're fully in ramble mode, so we're going to wrap it up now. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Dromai's cool. Dromai's gone. If you haven't seen the finals game, go watch it, because it was epic from PTLA. Uh, Chain is great. If you're at all interested in the Living Legend format, there are you know a good five or six decks that all seem like very reasonable choices, are strong and fun, and most of the games are fun. Um. Mist Veil is going to be. I cool. remember. The Mystic Talent is going to be very unique. <laughs> yep. I remember. So I remembered my second point, and we can end on this as food for thought. I know you joked about uh, preordering the precon, Kevin. I, as you just, you know, the random viewer listening to this, I would suggest you don't reaction impulse buy one of these. I have a very strong suspicion that they will reprint, or I have a theory at least, that Savage Sash will immediately be reprint, reprinted as an expansion card in Mysteria, because otherwise these precons will not make it into the hands of new players. They will just be bought by Spikes, um, which I feel like is not the intended goal of the product, and LSS generally is smart enough to avoid doing things like that. Agreed. Also... Uh, the the classic podcast show, like subscribe comment. Also, if you want to see, uh, Ray and I's Prism deck one card different, uh, in action, go check out Ray's YouTube channel on Hit Effect. Hey, thank you. I just uh, a video just went live as we were recording this actually of me beating up a Dorinthia playing <laughs> Vestige. Very nice. I'm sure we'll talk about it randomly on the podcast, but. Oh, sure. so much. There are so many conversations to have. <laughs> Ray will be dedicating a lot of time to explaining that deck, so if you want to yeah. learn how to play it. Prism Bible, it coming to a shelf near you at some point. This, at some point. I'm working on it. I've got a plane ride this weekend. I'll get some writing done. We'll see how it goes. Is it 10,000 words yet? Not yet. We, we will get there. Yet. Yet certainly yet. being the operative term. 
All right. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening to our rambles. We'll be back uh, next Tuesday. So quick, quick turnaround here because this one was delayed due to the PT. Uh, but yeah, as always, the IP3. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time.